Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back with your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple XRP and pretty much a lot of the market. We're going to quickly address why this week is very important as well for crypto. Um, now for the first time in eight months, that's right, eight months, the last time that we've seen this was around February 28th. Now the very important thing is the fact that we are seeing the weekly and the monthly candle close happen on one single date. We haven't seen this, like I said, since February. I think that this is significant for Bitcoin. I think that this is significant for the entire market as well. Now, with that, we are also talking about November coming very soon. You know, Monday, or I should say in seven days, it is November 1st. This is significant because November is a very, very bullish month for all of crypto. We already know that. In terms of XRP, November, December, and also, January are very, very significant months for a lot of these altcoins in terms of XRP. So when we're talking about a lot of these altcoins, volume hasn't been really you know, too much. It's been pretty much st sitting stable. Trade volume is up, but in terms of actual volume on these assets, it's nothing too crazy. Now, I do just want to quickly address why November is very important. Well, first off, the major breakout event actually started in December on XRP. But where we are at currently, we'll, we'll most likely trade sideways a little bit more, but it won't last too long. In fact, we'll get a little bit of a breaking point in November. We'll get a little bit of a solid price action move. But December is really the key month to watch for for a lot of altcoins, including XRP, because XRP is a laggard. It runs last. For anybody wondering, why isn't XRP moving? Why isn't even XLM moving, right? These are laggard coins. These are like Bitcoin, or, uh, Bitcoin Cash. Yeah, Bitcoin Cash. You know, Litecoin, stuff like that runs last. These are assets that do make some, you know, they do make a little bit of progression throughout the year. But during the last point of the bull run is when these assets really run. So I'm watching the next few months very, very closely. I've already said the next two months will be very key for a lot of these major positions that we are in. So we are watching for that PA to play out in terms of what Bitcoin did today, because I already told you guys that, you know, yesterday, today, whatever you want to call it, because it is still technically Sunday for me because I haven't slept. Um, you know, Sunday was very important because it is the weekly candle close. And we actually had a fairly strong candle close for the weekly. And we are back above 62K, which I think is fairly good on Bitcoin's part. And we're actually sitting at about 62.5K as I am recording this. So I think that that's great. Now, again, the weekly candle close is important. But what's more important is the monthly and the weekly combined all in one day. That packs a punch that's greater than no other. So we are watching this Sunday very closely. Now, with that being said, I'm going to be releasing three new videos on the site. You guys are going to have to wait to see what those are. But if you do want to get all my future products for free, as well as the current products on the website, you guys could get this Ultimate Crusader Trading Bundle Pack. It is $75, and every new product that gets released actually boosts this price up a little bit. This includes a ton of content for anybody who is interested. This is all of the videos that are included. There is a ton of content and I do plan on updating this with a lot more. Uh, so if you guys are interested into that, you guys could go on my website ncashofficial.com. But with that being said, let's just jump into this video. Now, I've talked to you guys about utility very, very closely. Now, this is actually coming from the creator of Dogecoin himself or herself, whoever it is. I'm pretty sure it is a guy though. Um, but we do see here, Reasons people buy crypto. 99% believe and or hope that one day someone will buy it from them for more than they bought it for. Repeating forever causing massive volatility and people to act tribal and desperate. 1% utility. Would be cool if utility was the main driver someday. Now that someday is not too far away in my opinion. I think that we are pretty much close to that point. I think by 2022 to 2025, we will be in a utility driven market. I don't think that we will be reliant on meme coins, on Bitcoin, on anything like that. I think that a lot of these you know, utility tokens that we are holding are going to be those main based gems that we've been holding for a fairly long time just waiting for their day to really kind of shine now right now there is a lot of people making massive amounts of gains on dogecoin on shiba inu on these meme coins and don't get me wrong i'm not you know i'm not going to say don't don't buy these coins they're garbage listen we already know that they have no utility but of course they do they do make money on you know the short term ideas like even if we come up here to shiba inu right we know that Shiba Inu this year has done significant in terms of percentage gains. Am I a holder of this? Absolutely not. Am I going to be a holder of this? No, I still don't care to hold this. 
you listen, if people are going to be millionaires overnight by this coin, go ahead. You know, that's just not me. I, I don't shill, you know, meme coins. You guys already know that I'm not going to buy into a coin that has 394, almost 395 trillion, you know, <laughs> coins in circulating supply. Uh, listen, a lot of people say, hey, this is going to one cent. Like I had a friend of mine that doesn't even know about crypto message me today saying, you know, Shiba to one cent. He he's going to be a multimillionaire. You know, God bless him. I hope that he does. But I'm just not personally seeing it. The market cap would be far too high for something like Shiba. But market caps for utility gems that are actually going to be utilized like XRP, you know, they could be significantly higher. I've said this multiple times. I think a utility driven market is right around the corner. I don't think that we have to wait too much longer. So I'm pretty much happy for this tweet to actually come out. And I think that this is great in terms of a idea that where we want the market to actually be it is a utility driven market. That way we could actually see the legitimacy factors being, you know, showed and of course crypto be taken serious. Now, in terms of seriousness, we talk about this as well. Shout out to XRP underscore owl. XRP maximalist shilling riddles are morons. Bitcoin maximalist shilling future of money are morons. Internet of value has multiple winners. Pay attention to people telling you about all the projects they have researched. Be wary of people incentivized to have a narrow view. And this is exactly why I'm always telling you guys about new projects. I, I'm always researching utility gems because, listen, I know that XRP is going to do great. I know that HBAR is going to do great. But we have to diversify into other assets and actually look at the bigger picture. There's so much more gains to be made. And in my opinion, those gains that are made on other assets that flow back into XRP and HBAR, first off, the best part about XRP is that it runs last. So we can make a ton of money and actually flow it into XRP and make even more money on, you know, pretty much the end of the bull run. And I think that that is the great idea here. It's not the idea that, hey, let's go all in on one asset. I know that it sounds good to go all in on one asset and, you know, make the most amount of gains, but that's not how things work. First off, I know a lot of people who are frustrated holding XRP or holding one coin just in general. It gets rough, but... I'm not going to show you guys riddles. I'm not going to show you guys garbage. I'm going to show you guys these projects that I've done so much research on. And I just want to give you guys my side of the idea on what these assets are going to be doing, on what my viewpoints on them are. I always say do your own research because there is so many assets in the space that are doing incredibly well and they are not getting the attention that they deserve. But it is what it is, right? You know, a lot of people will win. A lot of people will lose. I, I just think it's the idea that you know, be careful who you follow. If somebody is just, you know, one sided and biased on one of uh, one asset, I think that that's an issue. So always, you know, accept the other, you know, ideas on other assets and where they could also go. So just with that, let's move on. We just hear the most hated token that has always gone unnamed. We'll save them all or we'll lose and drown them all. XRP can never settle as a security. This is not a slap on the wrist and pay a fine case get a stupid grip, right? And I do completely agree with this. And when we're talking about this, this is, goes both ways, right? Because what I just got done saying, a lot of people do not buy XRP just because of this, you know, lawsuit. Or in fact, a lot of people don't buy XRP just because they hate it, they don't care for it, centralized, blah, blah, blah. And that's a problem, okay? Because XRP is going to be the catalyst event for all of crypto to really march it into, you know, a clarity standpoint and actually give it the power to be innovated and adopt it on a day-to-day -day basis by everyone. This is not just, you know, hey, it's the SEC versus XRP. No, I've always said it's the SEC versus crypto. This is an attack on crypto. Hey, you don't have to believe me. Look at this, right? We see our judge points out XRP wrapped using Flare would be synthetic and Gensler makes it clear. Make no mistake, it doesn't matter. You know, we even see our Johnny Deaton is correct. Every asset holder, including Bitcoin holders, should be concerned if the SEC wins. And here is that statement. So when we're talking about these it, when we're talking about this SEC lawsuit, we have to be very cautious with it because this is so much bigger than XRP. Now, of course, they are ignoring the facts at the, at the table, which is a ton of Ethereum manipulation. We actually see our attention at the Ethereum presale. Lubin explicitly called for large uh, purchases to be split between different anonymous addresses, unlike with Ripple and XRP, where everything is transparent. Nobody knows who holds how much Ethereum. He has deliberately called for it to be covered up. It, and nobody's looking into this at all at the same time. Now, we already see here all roads lead to who large buyers were in the Ethereum ICO, who were the whales that wanted to disguise their Ethereum purchases. Who knows, right? 
we, we don't know who those individuals are. It could be it could be anybody, right? It could be the SEC. It could be SEC members. It could be Gary Gensler. It could be it, we don't know. It, it's all anonymous. It's all you know. It, it's not transparent, and that is the big difference here in terms of Ethereum and Ripple and XRP. Everything within the Ethereum sort of idea on this you know SEC case has just given me a bad vibe. I, I There's a lot of corruption and manipulation happening in, in behind closed doors, and I'm just not happy with how this case has been going on. I'm not biased at all in terms of this either. It's just the idea that there is a big problem going on here. Now, we also see over here, G7 countries reach breakthrough on digital trade and data. Now, this is fairly big because when we're talking about these major markets, I've always said that the trade market is ready to be disrupted. And I think that this is a great way of getting to that point. Now, in fact, in terms of talking about this, we see here we oppose digital protection, uh, protectionism and authoritarianism. And today we have adopted the G7 digital trade principles that will guide the G7's approach to digital trade. Uh, digital trade is broadly defined as trading goods and services that is either enabled or delivered digitally, encompassing activities from the distribution of films and TV to professional services. We actually see here in Britain alone, they did $600 billion in delivered trade in 2019. I'm sure that that was, you know, a lot bigger, even talking about 2020 in terms of, you know, the COVID virus and all that kind of stuff. So I'm sure it was much bigger than that. Now we do see here, but differing rules governing the use of customer data can create significant barriers, particularly for small and medium sized businesses or SMEs. And we already know Ripple loves SMEs for whom compliance is complicated and costly. We do see here the deal agreed on Friday is the first step in reducing those barriers and could lead to a common uh, rule book of digital trade. This is great. We are even seeing you know, cross-border data flows, safeguards for workers, consumers, and businesses, digital trading systems, and fair and inclusive global governance, uh, the communic way, or the communic said. Uh, we should address unjustified obstacles to cross-border data flows while continuing to address privacy, data co uh, protection, the protection of intellectual property rights, and security. We, al we also see here the British official with knowledge of the deal said this agreement is genuine breakthrough that is uh, the result of hard diplomatic graft. All of us rely on digital trade every day, but for four years, or I should say but four years, sorry, um, the global roles of the game have been a wild west that have made it difficult for businesses to seize the immense opportunities on offer. And I think that this is great. I, I, I mean, the global disruption in terms of digitization is going to be the main focus point. In my opinion, I think a lot of these major markets could actually see a major breakthrough success with digitization of these major markets. And again, it will prosper them into a new age of innovation as well as you know help them with scalability, low cost fees, inclusion, and so much more. And I think it all comes back down to the idea of this tweet here. Utility is going to drive the cornerstone of crypto adoption and allow for it to be prospered into a legitimate sized market where crypto is no longer a two trillion, a 20 trillion, but we're talking $200 trillion plus market. And that is the end goal in terms of my mind on where crypto actually gets to because this is so much bigger than, hey, look at this asset, it does cross border payments. That's not just the end goal. There is so much more use cases out there than just cross-border payments alone. And we are marching into that major market disruption of a lot of these top tier markets in terms of even digital trade and so much more. And I am very excited to be holding these major digital assets. So with that being said, I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you guys don't more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world this has been nick peace out guys